Hello everyone, Evan Ag here from evanag.com and agdesign.com. And today I'm showing you something that I'm really, really excited about. I just recently took the jump and uh, upgraded to Photoshop Extended CS5. And I'm amazed by the the changes they've made and the improvements they've made to 3D abilities within Photoshop. Now I will totally, you know, put a disclaimer on all of this by saying that... Um, the 3D in Photoshop is by no means comparable to, you know, something like Maya or, you know, Blender or Cinema 4D, etc. I think of this totally differently. I think of this more as helping you to achieve the sort of graphics and things that you want to achieve in Photoshop. Um, that Like lighting and shading effects that we try to reproduce in 2D so they look 3D, but this actually allows you to have them in 3D. Um, and a great example here is of this text here. Um, obviously, this isn't something you can do very easily in Photoshop normally. Um, but with the CS5 Extended, it's very, very quick and easy to do. And as I'll show you here, it's also very easy to change the perspective and layout of your 3D text. Um, so this isn't a one-shot thing where you're faking the depth and the, um, the extrusion. Uh, so I'll show you how to uh, set up some simple 3D text here within Photoshop CS5. So I'll go ahead and turn off this layer first off. <clears throat> and I just made a, a gradient background, you know, going from blue to a darker shade of blue. It's a nice starting point. And I'm going to choose the text tool. And I'll go ahead and make my text white just so we can see it. And let's call this Photoshop. Photoshop CS5. Let's go ahead and scale it down a little bit. And we'll go ahead and put a big extended below it here. Space them out. Okay. All right, so we create our text layer and uh, the 3D rep, I think it's called the repousse um, feature works great with text. So we're gonna select our text layer. If this 3D panel isn't visible, just go up here to this arrow and click it and go down to 3D and it'll appear for you. And um, then all you gotta do is from this menu here, the create new 3D object, select 3D repousse ob object and click create and it has to rasterize the text which is unfortunate but necessary and it'll spin for a moment <clears throat> and then it's going to bring up this box here where you have all sorts of, of uh, choices for the style of extrusion that it's going to do um, it can sort of do bevels on the edges of your text and things like that, um, you know, chamfers, and it can do bulges around the corners of your text so that your fa your font has more of a bubbly look to it. And you can play around with these. There's some definitely some cool effects, uh, including like twisting to where not only does it extrude the text, but it sort of rotates the extrusion um, as it extrudes it. But you can see also there, there are options here for materials. I think it's easier to set these in a moment in another dialog. Um, but it gives you the option. But as you can see, some pretty cool effects. And it's all true 3D, which is great. Um, let's see here. Let's go back to the standard extrusion here. And if you mouse over, it'll actually tell you the name of what the extrusion is. Because these uh, diagrams aren't incredibly helpful, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but there's you can extrude it to you know a certain depth if you want to by default it's one on most of these I'm going to actually change this to 0.3 um, I'm going to leave everything else the same for now but you could also customize your extrusion like we can use a preset or we can actually create our own extrusion if we have really specific goals in mind and uh, you know there's other options here that you can play around with as you need to um, but for now 
we're going to go ahead and take that as it is and click OK. OK, so now we have, in a moment, we will have a 3D object that we can rotate, you know, move our camera around if we want to, etc. And the tool we're going to want to use here first is this tool right here, which is just an object rotate tool. And that will allow us to take and swing our text around a little bit so we can see the 3D aspects a little better. And one thing you'll notice quickly is obviously this doesn't look like a finished product because we're seeing a lot of guides and, and things that we wouldn't want to see. If you want to change that, you can click up here on Scene and then go down to Quality and you can change that to Ray Traced Final. And it uses this grid system to automatically render what you're doing as you do it. I wouldn't recommend turning on the Ray Traced Final until you've pretty much finished doing any of your textures and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and quit it for now and I'll leave it on interactive painting. And then you can do some cool things here. Now one thing that's kind of counterintuitive is I haven't found a way yet to set um, like a global material for every part of your text or your object. Um, it kind of splits them up into different parts. Like we have the front, we have the front bevel, we have the extrusion, we have the back bevel, and the back inflation material. Um, so whenever you want to change one, as from what I can tell, you have to actually change them individually. Now, I'm, I've already downloaded the free materials package from Photoshop.com. Um, if you want to download it, which I highly recommend, there are some great textures in there, go to the 3D menu, then go to Browse 3D Content Online, and right on the front page there, you'll see an option to download the materials package for Photoshop Extended. Highly recommend it. And once you do, you can go here and it'll give you these options that weren't there before. And the one I'm going to work with today is under plastic. And it is right here. And if I mouse over, it's called the plastic matte white. So I'm going to change all of my materials to that. And I'll point out something about what these materials are doing in a moment. Uh, one thing they have done a good job with is uh, the materials portion. I think it's very similar to you know 3D Studio Max or something like that, where you can spec you know specify a diffuse color, opacity, the bump. You can specify images for the environment and the normal conditions. Uh, you can specify a reflection amount. Um, all these different things that allow you to achieve realistic 3D textures um, are just amazing. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and switch over and uh, get a little bit better renderer here so you can see what this material is doing. It's supposed to be creating sort of a, uh, as if these were made out of plastic, of kind of a matte plastic. Um, but we could actually go in here, let's say we want them to be slightly different. Like we want the front to be you know, sort of really glossy looking. Um, and shiny, why not? Shiny is always good. Okay, great. Looks good. And of course, by default, it gives you, I'm not sure why yet, it gives you these three infinite lights, which kind of, I think the lighting is a little harsh by default um, but it's also somewhat challenging at least when you're starting out to work with the lights in Photoshop but you must have a light in order for your materials to to look the way you want them to look um, you can create custom lights which I'll show you here in a moment by going down here to this menu button here oh sorry wrong button this one here, and you have the option of four different types of lights depending on the style you're going for. I'm going to go ahead and create a spotlight. And I'm going to turn our render settings down for a moment so we can interact with this a little better. Okay, and I want to turn off our infinite lights just so we can see what the spotlight's doing here. And if you want to move this spotlight around, this is a little counterintuitive. They've got this set of movement and rotation buttons here. And if you click down on this one, which is the light button, 
you can use do the 3D light pan tool and easily move your light around wherever you want. And you can actually click on the axis here and move this away or closer to the text or Their axis system is very, very neat. It's uh, well done, too. It's, it's one of the better, actually. It's very easy to rotate objects. <coughs> there we go. And let's switch over to a better render and see what this looks like. Cool. And of course, we can use a combination of lights, too, if this is still a little too dark. I can, yeah, there we go. That's much better. So that's a brief introduction to 3D text in Photoshop CS5 Extended. Uh, it's very, very worthwhile to upgrade to Extended if you do so, any sort of um, 3D work, or in my case, I do tons of After Effects work, and I needed the ability to create true 3D text that I could use within After Effects. And uh, I'm just getting started with that, and so far, it's incredibly exciting. But that ends this tutorial, and uh, have fun working in 3D with Photoshop CS5 Extended.